Okay, Lily, can I say Doctor Who? Because he has a TARDIS and I could get off the desert island if I had his TARDIS. A really great chef. So maybe Gordon Ramsay's cookery book, because he'd be able to cook some food as we were escaping. That's a bit of a cheat. <laughs> I don't know, something, maybe a comic book or something like that. Captain America, there you go. Okay, Heraclea, um, actually, with Dickens, he, he really uh, gives you all the information that you need to create that shade. He's such a descriptive author that, I mean, really, he describes the physicality of the person. Sometimes he describes their voice, but it's just a, it's sometimes an instinctive thing that you, you can kind of hear the voice of the person because the description of them is so good. It's one of the reasons why I chose the book. Okay, Crystal, there's a little, a little story that goes with this particular audio book because when I, when I was at drama school, we did this, we did an adaptation of David Copperfield in our, um, in our third year. It was one of the first things we did. It was over 20 years ago now, but some of the voices that were in that play, particularly my own, because um, I played Uriah Heep, came back into my, into my mind. Some of them didn't, some of them I couldn't remember, but some of the more identifiable voices definitely were influenced by some of my colleagues from drama school. Fail, I think the first book which had writing in it that I, that I remember was weirdly The Hobbit. Um, it was read to me in school and then I kind of picked up the book myself because the teacher did a, such a brilliant voice of Gollum that I picked up the book and just started reading it aloud because I wanted to copy her doing the voice of Gollum and then that just got me into reading, so it was that. Okay, Lara. Yeah, I think one of the books that had a really big impact on me was uh, Crime and Punishment. And I still remember the moment where he commits the murder, but as a, as a reader, you you're so engaged with the character that you, you find yourself not wanting him to commit the murder and forgiving him when he does, even though it's a, it's a terrible thing. And I think when, the reason that it changed me is it because it gave me the ability to have empathy with people that, that do terrible things. And, and actually, subsequently, through my work as an actor, I've always been drawn to those characters that tread a dark path or take the wrong path, that good people that do bad things. And I, uh, I think it was that book that, that definitely influenced me. Okay, Tina, it depends on how long the audio book is, but we figured out that at the rate that I read Dickens, we did about 100 pages a day. So we were 1,400 pages and it took about 14 days. Um, when I first started prepping it, I thought we were gonna be a bit faster than that, but that's pretty much what it was. Sarah, never. I really don't. I don't really watch my own work back either. I have to have my arm twisted because because you sort of really live it while you're there. I don't necessarily, I mean, I listen to excerpts as we're going along because it's the type of editing that we do. Um, but I, yeah, there's too many other audiobooks that I'd rather listen to and another, another reading perhaps. <laughs> Betty, um, <clears throat> I, I've always done a, a fairly good regime of voice work. Um, it involves probably 15, 20 minutes of a bit of Alexander technique, a singing warm-up. Um, it's, it's one of the warm-ups that I, I used on The Hobbit, but also it comes from years at drama school. And you know, I do have quite a robust voice, so it rarely, rarely goes. But with, with this kind of work, you have to be able to be very still and physically not move around and still be able to produce a big sound, which is quite difficult. So yeah, I do various things. Catherine, um, well, Hannibal was a considerable time ago. I suppose I finished that in at the end of March, and, and we, I didn't start this till August. So, yeah, he he was well and truly down the drain. Although, even you always bring a little bit of the, the the very impactful characters that you play. You always bring a bit with them, and I feel like there was something in the Hannibal character 
that just re-emerged after 20 years of physical movement. And likewise, when I was voicing Uriah Heep in this book, it was just a glimpse or a memory or something, a, a bell ringing that reminded me of Francis Dollarhide. Of course, you know, they're, they're nothing like each other and Uriah Heep is, you know, fraudulent. He's not a, a you know, serial killer. But I don't know, they, they do connect and, and I, let, I let those connections happen.